The Domino Sugar Factory, which has graced the Brooklyn skyline since 1856, is a building we'll never see again from the Williamsburg Bridge. The historic factory will be leveled and replaced with residential apartments, but not before it gets a sweet send-off. Kara Walker, who is known for her African-American historic-driven paintings, created her very first sculpture. The best way that I can describe it? A sugar sphinx that sits inside the Domino Sugar Factory. It's the exhibit that almost everyone within the New York City area is trying to see. And I do mean almost everyone. The line to the entrance stretched up and down the block. The queue wasn't at a complete standstill for too long. After about 20 minutes, observers were at the main entrance where they were able to get an idea of what the exhibit was about from the tile on the outside walls of the building. A subtlety, or the marvelous sugar baby, a homage to the unpaid and overworked artisans who have refined our sweet taste from the cane fields to the kitchens of the new world on the occasion of the demolition of the Domino Sugar Refining Plant. Now that title is more than a spoonful of sugar. So what do you think the exhibit is all about? You guessed it, sugar. Now, did you know that Domino's was the primary winner in the sugar trade? By 1870, it was producing more than half of the sugar in the United States. However, when you piece the history of how sugar became a sweet commodity and how it was produced by the hands of slaves during the sugar and slave trade and the history of Domino's factory from explosions, labor strikes to closing its doors for good in 2004, the story is far from a subtlety. When you walk into the Domino Sugar Factory, you're hit with an aroma of candy. You'll see the sugar in the walls, sugar dripping down the walls, and off to your right, the marvelous sugar baby herself. She is grand. She's bold, striking, and sweet. She was made from styrofoam blocks and then coated in layers and layers of sugar. On WNYC, art critic Deborah Solomon described the Sphinx as, quote, Mammy being placed in a position of power, end quote. I can actually see that, but others may not see it that way. The sculpture sparked conversation of racism, disrespect of black women's sexuality and their bodies. And, you know, everyone's a critic, but I think that if skeptics would have taken the time to research or even listen to Kara Walker's NPR interview with Audie Carnish, then they may have had a better understanding of the work in itself. The 75 feet long, 35 feet tall, and 26 feet wide Sphinx was the main attraction for most observers, but for me, I had a sweet tooth for the sugar babies. The sugar baby sculptures were carrying baskets of sugar or clusters of bananas. Some of the sugar babies were molded out of melted candy and has a color of molasses that was dripping down their bodies. On the day I went, there were pools of melted molasses surrounding the sculptures. One of the sugar babies lost one of its arms as it stood in the sunlight that shined through the factory windows. If you give it a little thought, it's a symbolic reminder that many slaves lost their lives, fingers, hands, and arms when they had to work in the Caribbean sugarcane mills. But if they worked under such conditions, why did Kara Walker mold a smile on their faces? Maybe it's because they were finally working for Mammy and not Massa. I'm not sure, and I didn't have an opportunity to speak with the artist on the day I went to pay a visit. In the meantime, do a little research on the exhibit and the history of sugar in the U.S. Then head on over to Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and down to the Domino Sugar Factory, because a subtlety is a sweet sight to see.